They told us nothing survives the worst radiation disasters. But what if that was never true? What if right now something is drinking radiation for breakfast, quietly rewiring the future of nuclear cleanup and deep space travel? Keep watching, because by the end of this video you'll know a secret NASA is testing this very year, and it starts with a mutant fungus thriving in the ruins of Chernobyl. Ready to see how a living shield might keep astronauts alive on Mars? Hey curious minds, Annie here from Microbiology Videos, your lab coat free pass to the microscopic world. Smash that like button for extremophiles and buckle your hazmat suit. We're diving into radiotrophic fungi. On April 26, 1986, Reactor 4 at Chernobyl ripped itself apart, blasting more radiation than Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. Decades later, researchers in heavy protective gear spotted something unsettling, inky black mold colonizing the shattered graphite blocks. It wasn't just surviving. Lab tests showed the fungi actually grew faster when bathed in gamma rays. Picture that. What kills us in minutes was turning these microbes into steroid-pumped bodybuilders. Mind Trupasco melted. If mold can convert radiation into energy, could it one day power a spaceship? Stick around. We'll test that idea. Scientists isolated more than 20 melanized species, but three stole the spotlight. Cladosporium spherospermum the Chernobyl crawler, Wankaella dermatitis, a black yeast that senses radiation like a homing pigeon, and Cryptococcus neoformans. Yes, the same crafty pathogen doctors dread in hospitals. All share one superpower, melanin in their cell walls, the same pigment that colors human skin. Except their melanin isn't for a summer tan, it's a radiation sponge. Think photosynthesis, but swap sunlight for gamma rays. In 2007, Dr. Ekaterina Datachova's team zapped fungal melanin and watched its electron spin resonance spike. Result? A fourfold jump in how fast those electrons reduced NADH, the cell's little energy coins. Translation Radiation supercharges melanin, turning it from a passive shield into an electron pump that funnels juice straight into the fungus's metabolism. Some call this radiosynthesis. Sure, the pathway isn't fully mapped, but the growth curves don't lie. In controlled trials, melanized C. neoformans exposed to radiation churned out biomass three times faster than non-irradiated clones and sucked up 14 C. acetate like a kid with a milkshake. Meanwhile, an albino mutant with its melanin genes knocked out, barely budged. Same nutrients, same everything, except the tan. Melanin isn't just armor, it's the charging port. Moral of the story? Even fungi know the glow-up is real. Let's weaponize, peacefully, that appetite. Dadachova's lab trained Wangiela to crawl toward fresh radiation sources. Over weeks of chronic exposure, the yeast learned to chemotropically steer hyphae toward the hottest spots, then wrap them in cocoa-black mycelium. Imagine spraying spores over an old weapon site. Days later, you've got living detection strings that light up Geiger counters and immobilize strontium fragments like bioconcrete. Plus, melanin polymers chelate heavy metals. Bonus! Drop a comment. Would you trust mutant mold to guard your groundwater? Lab columns packed with melanized biomass yank uranium and lead ions from water almost as efficiently as industrial ion exchange resins, without the toxic sludge. Engineers are already embedding melanin into printable hydrogels that change conductivity when they taste radiation, turning a creepy fungus into a smart sticker sensor. Plot twist. In 2019, astronauts mounted a petri dish of C. spherospermum on the ISS. After 30 days in microgravity, a layer just 1.7 millimeters thick cut incoming cosmic rays by 2%, potentially 5% in all-round coverage. Do the math. To slash Mars surface exposure to Earth levels, you'd need a fungal wall approximately 21 centimeters thick. That's lighter than hauling lead, and it self-replicates. A radiation shield that grows itself while you nap in the crew quarters? Tell me you're not intrigued. Fast forward to 2025. A NASA-led team fused fungal melanin with biodegradable PLA plastic, bolted it to the outside of the ISS for eight months, and published in PNAS. Result? The melanin composite lost less mass, formed fewer UV wrinkles, and shielded a PVC layer underneath from radiation damage. Translation, cheaper, greener, stronger. 
Meanwhile, a Baltimore startup called Melitech just nabbed a NASA SBIR grant to coat Europa-bound electronics in melanin silicone goo. Dadachova's group also tests melanin gels that could protect cancer patients' healthy skin during radiotherapy and, one day, astronauts' faces on extravehicular walks. Think SPF 1000, but for gamma rays. Granted, nobody wants to look like a chimney sweep on prom night, so chemists are tweaking particle sizes to make the creams transparent. Beauty influencers, call me. From radioactive meltdown to skincare routine, talk about product pivot. Remember my tease about powering spacecraft? Early prototypes of melanin-based bioelectrochemical cells have produced microamp currents under radiation. It's not Iron Man arc reactor material yet, but imagine shielding panels that also trickle charge onboard sensors. Drop a emoji in the comments if you want a deep dive on fungal batteries. Problem number one, some radiotrophic fungi are opportunistic pathogens. C. neoformans can cause meningitis in immune-compromised patients. Problem number two, unknown long-term behavior. What if the shield sporulates inside a Mars hab and your air filters clog? Problem number three, energy economics. Current electron harvest is tiny. Scaling to kilowatts might require gene editing or hybrid materials. Scientists are gene-knocking virulence factors, embedding melanin minus the living cells and modeling biocontainment protocols. So, no, Elon won't be painting Starship with wild mold tomorrow. But the roadmap is legit. Here's the twist you didn't see coming. Experiments show melanin converts only a sliver of radiation into chemical energy. Most is lost as heat. But that heat can drive thermoelectric layers, giving us a two-for-one shield and heat harvest sandwich. Research groups are layering melanin films onto bismuth telluride chips. Initial results, measurable millivolt output under medical X-ray doses. Could your future phone case harvest 5G and cosmic rays to stay topped off? Don't bet your Bitcoin, but researchers are betting grant money. I interviewed an engineer from the MISS e flight team. She told me how astronauts nicknamed their Petri dish Clyde. Every morning they'd shine a flashlight, see Clyde's fuzzy edges creeping, then tap the Geiger counter and notice the counts ticking down. That daily ritual became a morale boost, a living reminder that life adapts. Clyde's sample returned safely, earning a spot in the Smithsonian's Future of Flight exhibit proposal. Bet you never thought a mold patch could become museum-worthy art. TLDR applications, one bioremediation mats to lock down radioactive soils, two self-growing radiation walls for Moon and Mars bases, three melanin creams to guard human tissue, four lightweight mold-derived composites to protect electronics, five next-level biosensors, and maybe, just maybe, bio-batteries. If this blew your mycelium-loving mind, slap that like, culture the subscribe button, and fertilize the comments with your wildest fungal ideas. Got value? Hit the thanks button. It keeps lab lights on and Geiger counters clicking. One generation ago, the name Chernobyl meant catastrophe. Today, its black fungi whisper a different story, of organisms so adaptable they convert catastrophe into sustenance, darkness into energy. Maybe the universe's harshest places aren't empty after all. Maybe they're nurseries for life we haven't learned to see.